Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One. Good vibrations. At your service to talk about um, elevation plane antenna radiation pattern plotting. That's what E plane stands for. Earlier today, uh, June 28th, 2014, field day, I made a video about H plane radiation patterns, the horizontal plane looking straight down on an antenna. Well, in an elevation plane pattern, you were looking sideways at the antenna so that straight up like this is the zenith, 90 degrees elevation, the horizon, zero degrees, so you have elevation 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and uh, then your antenna would be positioned right there at the center where the zenith line intersects the surface of the Earth. So uh, when you plot an E-plane uh, pattern for an antenna, you have to know how the antenna is oriented with respect to this particular plane. For example, now suppose that we had a quarter of a wavelength of vertical antenna. Further suppose that this earth is perfectly conducting or that you have so many radials uh, buried in the ground around your antenna that it is, for all intents and purposes, perfectly conducting earth. Quarter of a wavelength vertical. You are far, far, far away from this antenna. So far that your whole antenna system, shack and, and vicinity just looks like a little speck. So you're looking at this from a great distance right along the horizon. You might imagine that uh, north is to the right and south is to the left, so you'd be looking west. Or you might imagine that west is to the right and east is to the left, so that you'd be looking south. But if you have a quarter of a wavelength antenna, a vertical antenna over perfectly conducting ground, it behaves just like a vertical dipole. And what you're going to get when you plot the radiation pattern of this in any direction is something that looks like a dipole radiation pattern cut off. Now that red circle here represents 0 dBd. That's 0 decibels gain with respect to the favored direction of a half-wave dipole in free space. So what you're going to get is a radiation pattern that looks like that with a, your vertical antenna and you're going to get maximum radiation theoretically right along the horizon in your elevation plane and that doesn't matter whether you're looking north, south, east, west, southwest, northeast, any direction it's going to look the same the pattern is going to be symmetrical and this is a very good antenna for DX and that is why you have a very good antenna for DX with a vertical over perfectly conducting Earth because of this low angle radiation. Now suppose that you were to extend that antenna to a half a wavelength instead. Then you would end up with the equivalent of two half waves in phase or what would, because of the reflection from the Earth you would get what would look like a vertical extended or a vertical um, double zap or two half waves in phase so you'd get about 3 dB of gain and you'd get even better low angle radiation. So you'd get something that looks like that. And again, it wouldn't matter whether you were looking at it from the north, the south, the east, the west, anything like that. That is why, um, and furthermore, your half wavelength antenna would have a very high radiation resistance at the feed point, so your loss would be minimal. Now there have been some uh, uh, literature about uh, extending that up to five-eighths of a wavelength and even getting maybe a squeezing another uh, dBd of gain out of that thing. But you get not only low angle radiation, but you also get a little bit of gain. So this is really a very good DX choice. A half or five-eighths wave vertical antenna with as many radials as you can manage mounted right on the earth or if you can manage to find a place with perfectly conducting Earth, uh, there is no such place that I know of. So that's why you would need or want to install radials. Now other types of antennas, if they have a 
directional pattern that is not uh, omnidirectional in the H plane, then it's going to matter which E plane you choose what this pattern is going to look like. For example, suppose that your half wave dipole is running horizontally in and out of the page that is right at you and right away from you. So the axis of the wire it, which is straight and a half wavelength is pointed right between your eyes. What are you going to see? Well it's going to depend on how high up that antenna is because the perfectly conducting earth and this again is an idealized case is going to reflect those radio waves and when it reflects them it's going to invert their phase. Now an interesting thing happens because of that if you put this antenna, this dipole antenna, right, running right in and out of the page at you and away from you, if you put that thing a quarter of a wavelength above perfectly conducting Earth, you're going to get, in effect, an end fire array pointed straight up. So you're going to get about 3 dBd worth of gain, but it's going to be right at the zenith because... Your antenna is a quarter of a wavelength above the Earth. The Earth inverts the phase. The wave goes a quarter of a cycle down, gets inverted, goes another quarter of a cycle up. So it's delayed by a, a half a cycle and uh, inverted. So your, your in-phase radiation is going to be straight up. Now, I don't really think that that's a very good arrangement. Certainly, it's not good for DX. If you want to work locally on low frequencies, um, relatively low, like 160 meters, if you want to work relatively close by, it might be all right because you'll get very good high angle radiation and it'll come back down off of the ionosphere not too far away. And on 1.8 and 3.5 megahertz, you rarely observe any kind of skip zone so but if you want lower angle radiation with a dipole antenna this is why they always tell you get that dipole up as high as you possibly can if you can get it up a half of a wavelength then what you're going to end up with is a, a little bit better low angle radiation you're going to get something that looks well it's not going to be gain with respect well you might get a little bit of gain. It kind of depends. You're going to get some reflection. You're going to get a pattern that looks something like this. So you, you're going to get better low angle radiation if you put that thing up a half a wavelength. And if you extend it up higher yet, you're going to get multiple lobes. And uh, the best ones will be at low angles. Now there are other uh, antenna patterns. For example, a Yagi antenna. If that's north, going to the right and your Yagi is pointed north and it's say a four element 20 meter Yagi up 150 feet good low angle radiation lots of gain you're going to be able to work some good DX if you aim that antenna in the correct direction now of course earth is not perfectly conducting so that complicates all of this it makes all of this much less precise but that, in general, is the overview of what an E-plane pattern is. You're, you're going to have to specify multiple E-planes to get a complete picture of what your antenna radiation pattern looks like. In most cases, uh, except for an omnidirectional horizontal plane antenna, then it'll look the same from any direction. I hope that I haven't done more to confuse you here than to clarify things, but E stands for elevation, elevation plane coordinates. Why they don't call it V plane for vertical plane is something I'll never quite understand because I think that's a better term for it. But in any event, this is W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations on Field Day 2014. Signing off for now. Maybe I'll check out the contest. So long.